everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Port Stash Project. Today is March 15th, 2021. And, uh, yeah, just a sort of a delivery show this week. We have uh, no real kit news or announcements this week. Oh, what? Yes. And uh, we should have some stuff next week. I would assume there'd be some spot runs from somebody or some little tidbit or, or, or something or another. It'll flow along. But this week, nothing. So we just have kit releases. So this will be a nice short video for everybody. Uh, everything is going to be an overseas release, as there were no domestic uh, releases this week either. So a few things from Aoshima, a few things from Hasegawa. So let's dive right on in and take a peek here. Over at Aoshima, just reissues, as it tends to be. Uh, they have reissued several of the Liberty Walk uh, vintage Nissan kits this week. These are just straight restocks. First up, you have the Liberty Walk, Liberty Works, Hakasuka Works, uh, 1960s two-door skyline. This is going to be, <coughs> excuse me, guys. I apparently swallowed a frog before starting here. This will be the number four kit in the series, and again, it's just a spot run. And then you have the Ken and Mary Works, uh, 2014 two-door edition this of course uh the one we talk about every time it comes out where like the outside of the kit does look like the outside of this car the inside of the kit is a very much recycled 1980s product and really wish they had done the work to convert the interior to uh sure i could i could scratch build blah 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 but i'd really just you know i i like the project but not enough to care that much about it so again this tends to be something that would be fun to do but yeah i also kind of wonder how you drive this car with no windshield wipers clearly it's not going out in the rain and then last Lastly, we have the Canterbury Works uh, Skyline Four Door. This will be the number three kit in the series, and again, just a spot run on that one. We have a couple of wheel sets this week as well. So, in the 19-inch wheels here, you got the Volk Racing RE30s, as well as the Advan Model T6s. And in the so-called this you know monthly kits, these are again just more reissues, but just reboxing. Uh, first up, you have the Toyota Mark II Tour 5 uh, 2000 JZX100 version. Uh, and then you have the reissue of the R35, if you will, Nissan GTR and its V-Spec version. Uh, this is a version we did not receive here in the United States. It is a J Japanese only or JDM only version. And uh, again, that's back out. Looks like it's black, but it's actually a really, really dark uh, purple in real life. So those are back out, and um, I've noticed now that I've taken a closer look at these boxings that they are actually slightly different than the last time they were reissued in the model car lineup. They've tweaked some of the Japanese wording on the boxes, and that's why they keep reissuing these as being you know new kits, because technically the boxing is ever so slightly different. Very, very minor, but it is what it is. And over Hasegawa, we have a couple of releases for their, their March kits. First up, you have the reissue, modified reissue, of the BMW 320i with its chin spoiler. So, yeah, this has a little resin chin spoiler. If you look at that box art right now, that little black piece below the front bumper, that is your resin chin spoiler. Uh, kind of a nice mix-up they did to this kit as well, as they included the uh, center lock rims, although I don't know how you get those off driving down the road if you got a flat, and also the racing suspension out of the JTCC cars. So this car sits a great deal lower, has the BBS uh, you know, racing wheels, it's street tires and street interior and street uh, suspension components, because really on these kits, the way they make the camber on them is uh, the way the brake, back of the brake discs attached to the suspension. They're just carved in a little bit, and so they tip. Um, so really, there's not really, you know, a lot to this. It's a set of brakes, basically, in the wheels. <clears throat> but it's certainly a little bit different, more aggressive look than the traditional uh, 320s they've done in the past, which have been completely and totally hella stock. And then you have this modified reissue, which is the Mitsubishi Lancer EX2000 Turbo ECI. Now, there's a very interesting little uh, tidbit about this car. <clears throat> This is the, homog the homologation, I'm going to trip over the word one of these days, of the Lancer rally car. The one that both Nunu and and uh, Hasegawa, rather, did the exact same rally car kit of. Um, these were selectively imported back into Japan. They were made in Japan, but they were not sold in Japan. This was not a, because of taxes and emissions and other things like that, this is not a car that was actually sold 
directly in Japan. This was sold in Europe and elsewhere. That is why when you look at that box art, it is a left-hand drive car. And the rally car is a left-hand drive car. Now, the problem with that in this kit is they didn't include the left-hand drive dashboard and, and wipers and stuff like that. Because those are kind of hogged out rally version. Of, uh, the, no, the wipers aren't, but the <laughs> dashboard is, obviously. They've included all the right-hand drive parts, which is not how this car is equipped. It never came with right-hand drive. It was a, a JDM vehicle. So the only way to really technically build this correctly, I mean, a lot of people just won't care. They'll be like, oh, cool, another Lancer, yay, uh, is to buy the Hasegawa rally kit, take the dashboard out of this, the dashboard out of the rally kit, and uh, do a little trimming and moving of parts around and create yourself a civilian left-hand drive dashboard to put into this car. Otherwise, I mean, it's a 99% rule, right? 99% of people won't know that it shouldn't be right-hand drive, but it's just one of those things that if you're going to offer this and you have a left-hand drive dashboard in the tooling, it really wouldn't have cost that much more. It would cost, yes, obviously, but it wouldn't have cost that much more to make the rally dashboard have swappable parts. And what I mean by that is if you get the Supra, the Hasegawa Supra, or the Hasegawa GTR, the R32, those two new kits, remember they have race car versions. And so they are tooled in a way that allows you to swap out blank pieces of plastic uh, with rivet detail on them rather than the actual HVAC and stereo controls that are in the civilian car. So you can use the same dashboard in either one, and then you just plug in the appropriate pieces of plastic to make it either a civilian dashboard or a racing dashboard. And that could have very easily been done on this if they had thought that far ahead. I'm sure they knew they were going to do this, but I don't know why they chose to do it the way it is. Because what you're going to wind up with, if you try to do this correctly, is a rally kit with no dashboard. <laughs> because you need to take the, civ and the civilian kit with, you know, and you can't put the, the left hand or the right hand drive civilian thing into the rally kit and feel good about selling it to somebody, right? Because you're going to chop it all apart. It's not going to be a very contiguous style dashboard because you're going to hog out the area where the uh, glove compartment goes, you're going to hog out the area where the HVAC controls go to put it into the left-hand drive dashboard because there's none of that, you know, none of that stuff is on the right, on the left-hand drive dash, and on the left-hand drive dash of the rally kit is a rally computer, and so there's not a glove compartment there. <laughs> it's just, it's not something that can't be done. The conversion itself is really not that hard, but you're going to destroy two dashboards in the process to make one, and then you're going to have like a kit that's completely and totally, you know, there. It's just not going to have a dashboard. <laughs> Whoops. I mean, I suppose you could could like you know do the conversion. I suppose you could resin cast the dashboard as it comes out of the kit, and then you know mangle it all up to put it into this kit that we just talked about. So that you can put the resin cast one back into the kit to sell it. It's disappointing. A little bit of extra work from Hasegawa. I mean, that's one way to make you buy a second kit, I suppose. But at the same time, it's not one that allows you to really sell that second kit when you take the parts out of it. A lot of, you know, when you think about it, a lot of things you could kit bash. Uh, there were, you know, ways to get around them. Or there were ways you could resell the kit afterwards. The perfect example we always go to here is the infamous... Chevy Novas from Ravel, the 69s, where they did the Yanko that was, you know, completely and totally wrong as far as the seats and, and various other components went. And then they released that Capo Nova that was a non-existent car, but it had the flat hood and the poverty hubcaps and the bench seat and all the stuff that the Yanko Nova should have. And therefore, you could just take those two kits and combine them together and you've got a solid Yanko Nova out of it, but you still had enough parts left over to build a 396 SS Nova out of the parts that were left. And so, yes, you know, maybe somebody doesn't want it that way exactly, but when you sold the parts that were left from making a correct Chevy Nova, you had a whole model kit. It might not be what the box advertised, but it was a whole model kit. You could build an entire literal Chevy Nova out of that, the parts that were left over from that kit bash, and you know, it's what a lot of people did or why they bought the two of them was to make a correct Yanko Nova. And then you'd be like, oh yeah, by the way, I also still have this SS396 Nova that I can build afterwards. So anyway, back to the model kits of this week. This is the last one from Hasgau. It is the Fujitsu 10 Tom or 10 Toms uh, Corolla 
A92 from the 1991 Japanese Touring Car Racing Series. So this car uh, did finish, did, was a podium car. It finished first in uh, the fourth round at, at Sendai Raceway in 1991. This has new mirrors, uh, a new fuel uh, filler inlet, and then a new windshield wiper. Apparently the windshield wiper changed dramatically between 1989 and 1991, enough so that you uh, get a whole new one in this kit. And uh, yeah, it's a cool car. Uh, this is right after uh, the Supers were retired, so it's a continuation of that livery as far as the powder blue Toyotas go. So that's kind of cool as well. And uh, yeah, just a, it's a Division Three car, like all the four-cylinder cars were, but it is a winning Division Three car. So there is that for everyone this week and that guys wraps this one up so hope you guys had a great weekend and we'll see you guys on the other side